Welcome back to the Mayhem. So this is going to be part two of the Y-axis assembly. Um, it's about a 22 minute long uh, video uh, and there are bloopers on the end of this one. I know that the last video kind of cut off at the very end um, but that was because after editing I found out that this thing was almost 40 minutes long which is just too much. Uh, I'm sorry I know that you know there's a lot of detail to cover in it and I cut a lot of stuff out. I had about three hours of uh, footage. So anyway, uh, on to the conclusion of the y-axis. Alrighty, good morning. It is the next morning. Um, not much has changed on this assembly since last night, but one thing that I did do was I took this whole thing down to my uh, kitchen countertop uh, because I wanted a nice flat surface to make sure that I had the whole thing square. <clears throat> so what you want to do at this point, you've gotten everything all measured out. You got this stuff installed, right? What you want to do is make sure that it's flat, okay? Uh, you don't really have to do this with the one that has the extruded frame. Um, it's a lot simpler to, to do the 3S, <clears throat> but on the, 2 point, the 2S and the 2.5S that has the threaded frame, you want to make sure that everything's nice and parallel and square and also flat. <clears throat> what I found was that this side right here was higher. Um, so what you do is you put it on a flat surface and then you just push down on each corner. And then you can hear it rock. Whenever I push down on this corner, it was doing, it was lifting and lowering. Okay. <clears throat> what I did on that side, uh, all I had to do was loosen up these two, pushed it down, tighten it back up, and now it's nice and square and flat and everything. Uh, it does elicit questions from the wife like, hey, what are you doing with the 3D printer thing on my counter? Um, but it's actually an effective way of um, getting it all squared up. So we're going to finish out the directions for the y-axis and then we'll take a break. All right, so the next direction in the y-axis is to get the wiring rounded correctly. All right, so I've tightened the y-axis and stopped. That's this thing. That's all nice and tight and good. All right, now what it wants to do, so Y-axis cable guide, so we've got that done. Now assemble Y-axis belt holder. Place the Y-axis holder on the Y carriage as shown in the picture. And it wants me to use huh, that piece. Then we're gonna need two Just enough to get them started, just like that. Like I said, these nuts are going to end up coming back off. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to oil these up. Now, a lot of people will elect to use grease on these. And what I have found is that grease over time will thicken and harden. And when it does, it'll cause the whole mechanism to stick. Once you've done that, your bearings get uh, grease in them you're not going to get it out without taking the bearings out so i'll use a light machine oil they recommend um, sewing machine oil um, i have this stuff for when i'm working on bicycles um, but i know that singer sells like a good sewing machine oil so I'll lubricate it up, get the excess off of it, and into the bearings we will go. Now, there's, this is tricky. You want to make sure that you're not forcing it. 
Okay, so I'm just kind of gently placing it in. You want to make sure that you get it straight. And ideally, it's going to go in. This is like no force. I am just no force putting it in. Because if you use any sort of force on that, and you pop the ball bearings out, that's a bad thing. You want to keep all the ball bearings in as you can. Now the guides do say, hey, if you if your bearings come out, it's not a big deal. You know, one or two bearings, not a big deal. So what I did there, you didn't see it because on this other end, I rotated the rod, rotated the rod around a little bit to try and, and help rock it in. So I'm just continuing to rotate it around, rotate it around. Watching it come, it's popping out of the seal. And there it goes. And once it's in, the rod won't rotate. It's gonna lock into position. Okay, that's okay. Because this is just a linear, linear rod, okay? And one of the things you can do at this point is put a little bit of oil here and let it rock in to the bearing. Oil on the bearing up. wipe off some excess you may or may not disagree you may or may not agree with my method here okay I know that on the internet they have a whole bunch of different ways of doing this this is what I do okay you can do what you want to do this is what I do and it works for me I've got three of these printers uh, I've done the grease thing and I know that it fails once I know something is gonna fail I don't do it again it's Kind of a no-brainer. All right, so here I'm gonna show putting this rod in. Hopefully it's... I'm having a hard time getting the camera to actually be able to see all of it. Okay. So here we are, we're in the bearing. I'm gonna come up right to the end of the seal. Rotate, let it penetrate the seal, goes in, now I can feel it sort of in there, rock it around a little bit, and out the, out the seal, there we go. Okay, I'm going to do the same deal here, so now we're going to put this part into this. Come on, let go. Ugh. Into this part. Like butter. So this is a good ch good time to check the assembly and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. If it's not nice and smooth, you'll know yeah, it's smooth. Um, if you get to the point where you're you get into a certain point on the printer. Generally, it's towards the ends, and it's starting to bind up on you or have resistance. That generally means that it's either too narrow or too far apart. Okay, but this is dead smooth. That's like that's like really really nice. Okay, so now we're going to do the zip tie, the zip tie dance. on the, the manual, but I think this will work out just fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tighten them and trim them. So I just grab it here, give it a little pull. Okay, 
Okay, there we go. Now it wants us to assemble the belt on the Y axis. Tooth side down. So tooth side down, so sort of like I'm going to take this through here. So I'm not following the directions 100% here. We'll see how it turns out. Loosen the motor bolt. Basically, this, we're, we're going to be tensioning this belt up. Let's just do one. I felt like I was pretty close. Now it's a, it wants us to adjust the um, the idler and the bearing here. So what that's going to look like is just right here. Now it should be close, but what we're looking at is making sure. See this this. This part over here is gonna float. Okay, so it's got it's got room to float in here in line. This right here, we want to make sure that the belt isn't rubbing against one of the sides, which as you can see right here, it is rubbing against that side right there. So what we're gonna do, we got a couple of set screws here. We're gonna loosen up, we'll move it out, we'll tighten it up, and then we'll try it again. I'll take my little screwdriver here. I'll pull this out. Move that out a little bit. We'll tighten this one up. Tighten this one up. This one is the one that really counts because it's on the flat. So that one's the one that's gonna keep our tracking. Run it back and forth a few times. Yep, that's perfect. So as you can see here, it's right in the center. All right, so there's that. I got that tightened back up. I didn't have to move these at all. Now it wants us to zip tie the cables to the threaded rods as shown in the picture. Cut and discard extra zip ties. So they want us to have these running around here. So we'll take four zip ties. Jim zip ties. Now notice I didn't pull on these. I didn't pull on these zip ties here. 
The reason that I didn't was that these wires are going against the all thread and I don't want to cause any shorts. Alrighty here, leveling the y-axis, which we've already done. I did that before. Y-axis feet, check the end stop, double check the wire carriage, all done. Okay, so it wants us to just double check all the assembly and make sure that we're all good on our feet and everything. Um, I've got some cork here, this coaster material. I'll probably just cut some of that stuff out put on the feet and we'll be good to go. Alright, then we've routed our wiring around to kind of get it out of the way. And that's Y axis. Yeah, if you look in the background, you can see that I've got the directions up on the screen. Um, their, their website is, very, is quite good. Um, I'm not sure what the next steps are, um, but I'll take you guys along for the next step. This is uh, going to be the conclusion of this video. Um, I will get this video all put together and get it staged and ready to go. And then we will just carry on with the mayhem. Um, probably by the time you guys see this video, this printer will already be up and running. But I'm going to go through each step of the process and kind of document it out as good as I can. So that um, if you're thinking about getting a Prusa printer, you get a really good idea of what it looks like to actually put one of these together. Um, the kits are quite rewarding. It's highly recommended that if you're going to um, get a Prusa, that you go ahead and get the kit because it'll, it'll really give you the finer points of um, how, you know, how it goes together. If you ever need to work on it, you won't be scared to work on it. Um, it can be quite intimidating when you look at all the parts laid out in front of you. Um, but re really it's, it's pretty rewarding, especially like when you put the, the Y axis on, you click everything down into place and then you roll that Y carriage forward and backwards, um, and, and see how smooth it is. And that's all because you took your time, um, setting everything up. Uh, not everybody has, uh, dial calipers. Um, this set that I have is like maybe 20 bucks on Amazon. I use it all the time. Uh, if you're getting into 3D printing and you want to model things yourself, especially if you want to do stuff around the house, then it's a good idea just to get you a cheap set of uh, dial calipers, digital calipers that have uh, metric and standard on them. Um, the, this, this cheap set that I have, I, mean, I don't even know what brand it is, okay? but I got it off of Amazon. It says that it's stainless steel. That's it, that's what I use. Um, it's got some stuff on the back. Yeah, I don't know, I don't care. I just want it to be able to, to get measurements and lock down and then I can read it. Um, so it's it's worked pretty well. I've had this, this for probably three years. So uh, I couldn't imagine going without it. Anyway, so that's the conclusion of this video. The next video will be x-axis assembly which is the part that goes uh, that the the extruder rides on so that one will be probably a, a short one and then i will go on to the next part which i'm not sure what it'll be probably x v the z the extruder the extruder is going to be quite fun but um, this is such a long drawn out assembly process that um, I just wanted to have it in one step. 
the extruder is probably going to be one in its own because that is a quite time consuming process of getting everything all put together and all the little mechanicals and stuff going together with that. So anyway, um, if you haven't already, um, like, like the video if you like it. If you don't, then don't. I mean, I mean, you can, you can unlike a video. That's fine. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. Um, if you have comments and suggestions, please leave them below. Um, and if you run into me day to day and you have the, the questions, the comments or whatever, hey, give them to me. Um, I'm, I think I hit um, 35 subscribers overnight. So I picked up four overnight, which is awesome. I appreciate the support. Um, ring the bell and you'll be notified whenever I do upload new videos. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So we'll see you on the next video. Make sure you have a great day. Okay, got enough shorts in my life. I don't need shorts in my wires. And that was for you, Troy, which it wants the, the end stop right next to the, the uh, motor cable just like that and it is so that's good and my microphone is getting caught on stuff all right let's get the microphone routed correctly ah. bloopers all right so <clears throat> it will be already have it out. Sooner or later, I'll get the remote to work. <laughs> Here, maybe this will work. Come on. Work, darn ya. Fine, we'll do this the old fashioned way.